All right, and welcome back. So today we are going to be going through section 4.4, which is all about the isosceles triangle theorems. So this is, again, is going to be a two-parter. So you're going to have multiple sheets of guided notes. So let's have out part one. And by the end of this video, we're going to be able to apply the theorems about isosceles triangles. So let's have out that first sheet, part one, and let's begin. Isosceles triangles are defined as having at least two sides congruent. Isosceles triangles have special names for their parts, and there is an isosceles triangle on our right-hand side. The congruent sides are called the legs. The third side, so that's that non-congruent side, is going to be called the base. That's Megan Trainer's favorite part of this triangle, by the way. The angle opposite the base is called the vertex angle. So our vertex angle is the angle that is created with these legs. So it's inside of those legs. And the angles adjacent to the base are called the base angle. So any angle that's using the base as one of its sides, that's going to be a base angle. So the isosceles triangle theorem tells us that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. So if Segment AB is congruent to segment AC. Then we're going to have angle B is congruent to angle C. So those base angles are going to be congruent. And in this example, we're given that segment AB is congruent to segment AE. And we have to name isosceles triangle and its two congruent angles. So we're, again, we're given that AB is congruent to AE. So we have to name an isosceles triangle, and we're going to name two congruent angles. So we're going to look for those base angles. So we're going to say that triangle ABE is isosceles, because again, AB and AE are going to be those legs, and then those base angles are going to be congruent. So angle ABE and angle AEB. With this in mind, please work on problems one through four on the guided notes. And let's go through another statement. So if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite of those angles are going to be congruent. So let's go through another example. So in example number two, we're given that angle V is congruent to angle Y. We have to name an isosceles triangle and its two legs. So we're given that or angle V is congruent to angle Y, so those are going to be our base angles. So we have to look the opposite sides of those angles. Well. When we do that, we're going to say that triangle SVY is going to be isosceles, and we're going to say that segment SV is congruent to segment SY. SV and SY, those two segments, would thus be the legs of our isosceles triangle. With that in mind, please work on problems 5 through 8 on the guided notes. Turn it over when you're ready to move on. So in example three, we want to find the value of x. So we have two separate situations. We have A, we have B. For triangle A, we know that those base angles are 40 degrees, and those legs are 3x minus 5 and x plus 21. So since the two angles are going to be congruent, then the sides opposite of those angles must be congruent because we must have an isosceles triangle. So thus, 3x minus 5 is equal to x plus 21. And then we end up with x equaling 13. For b, by the isosceles triangle theorem, the third angle is also going to be x degrees. Since 70 is going to be our vertex angle and the two legs are going to be congruent, we have an isosceles triangle. So we're going to have x and x is going to be those two base angle values. So we're going to do x plus x plus 70 is equal to 180 since the sum of the measures of a triangle are 180, so x plus x plus 70, we then get 2x is equal to 110, and thus x is equal to 55. Awesome. With that in mind, please finish that sheet of your guided notes by working on problems 9 through 19, and then turn on over to now part 2 for the isosceles triangle theorems, second sheet of our guided notes. So if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite of those sides are congruent. And we know that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite of those angles are going to be congruent. And we can use the isosceles triangle theorem and proofs to show 
that two angles or two sides of a triangle are congruent. When you apply these theorems, you're going to be sure to apply them to only one triangle at a time. So in example one, we are given that segment AB is congruent to segment CB. We're congruent that segment AD is congruent to segment CD, and we want to prove that the measure of angle BAD is equal to the measure of angle BCD. So let's plan out this proof. So we're going to know that the measure of angle BAD is equal to the measure of angle BCD if the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. Well, that's going to be true if the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 2 is going to be equal to the measure of angle 4. Well, if we know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, then we're going to eventually be able to say that segment AD is congruent to segment CD and that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, meaning that we're going to have segment AB be congruent to segment CB. So that's our general plan for that proof. Please work on problems 1 and 2 on the guide notes right below this example. Number 1 is going to be the completed proof of this example, and then problem 2 is a separate question. In example 2 now, we're given that segment AB is congruent to segment AC. Angle B is congruent to angle 2. Angle C is congruent to angle 1. And we want to prove that that smaller triangle on the top, triangle ADE, is going to be isosceles. So we're just going to go through a quick little plan here. Well, if we know, if we work backwards, if we eventually prove that triangle ADE is isosceles, then that would mean that segment AD is congruent to segment AE. Well, if we know that that's true, segment AD is congruent to segment AE, well, then we're going to know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And using that given, we're going to be able to say that angle B is congruent to angle C. And angle B would be congruent to angle C if, again, segment AB is congruent to segment AC, which is also a given here. So by working backwards, this could be a good plan. Please work on problems 3 through 6 on the guided notes. Problem 3, again, is the proof of this example after we went through a plan together and then four through six are going to be separate problems great job with this keep make, making yourself proud again this is not easy stuff but you are doing your best and we're so proud of you let us know if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon